Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to tackle the other part, the y direction component of the electric field due to a line charge that has a line charge density equal to lambda. Notice that the point is point the point of interest here where we want to find the electric field is directly above the end of the line. Okay, to find the y direction, again we start with the same premise. We want to have the small de component right there, which is equal to k times the charge, a small dq, divided by the distance r squared. And notice that um, we can write a dq as being the line charge density times dx. So we write k lambda times dx over x squared plus y squared, because that's what r squared is equal to. But now we want to find the y component. Notice that we have the angle theta over there and we want to know the y component of the electric field and so the relationship for the cosine of theta and I think I've erased part of that here so let me go ahead and write it the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse which is y over r or in this case y over r which is the square root of x squared plus y squared so if we want to find dE in the y direction that's going to be equal to dE times the cosine of theta dE is equal to k lambda dx over x squared plus y squared. Keep in mind that in this case y is constant, only x varies from 0 to L. And uh, now we want to cosine of theta, which is equal to y divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. So then we can write dE in the y direction as follows. We know that y is a constant, so we end up with k lambda y. These are all constants. Now we have dx divided by the x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power. And if we want to find e in the y direction, that is equal to the integral from 0 to L of the dy's when we add them all up, which is equal to the integral from 0 to L of this integrand. Now, that, that type of integral is going to appear a lot in advanced ENM. And you'll find out that the integral of that can be written as follows. This is equal to ky lambda, I guess I reversed them in order, doesn't matter, times. Here we get 1 over y squared, 1 over y squared, 1 over the constant squared, times the variable, in this case x in the numerator, divided by the quantity x squared plus y squared to the one-half power and evaluate from z to l. Now you may say, well, how do you know that? Well, what you could do is you could take the derivative of this using the quotient rule and you'll end up exactly with the same thing you started with. So no problem there. That is indeed the integral of that. So now we're going to plug in the limits. So e in the y direction is equal to k lambda y times when I plug in the upper limit, 4x, I get 1 over y squared. Oh, I guess, matter of fact, you know what? This cancels out, doesn't it? I can get rid of this, and I can get rid of this, and I can write this as... That would be better. That way we don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to simplify things a little bit by writing it like that. Okay, so now this will be gone. Now we have to take the limits of that portion right there. So we have L divided by the quantity L squared plus Y squared to the one-half power minus when we plug in the lower limit. When I plug in the lower limit I get zero because there's a zero in the numerator like this. And so then this can be written as K lambda L divided by Y times the quantity 1 over L squared plus Y squared to the 1 half power. Okay, now we're ready to take that and plug that into our overall equation because now we have E sub Y in, in the Y direction, or E in the Y direction, that's equal to that. We have E in the X direction, so now we can write E. Electric field is equal to simply the sum of the two, so it would be E sub X plus e sub y. It's not a very good arrow here. There we go. Getting lazy. And that means that the electric field can be written as k lambda times 1 over 
L squared plus Y squared to the one half power minus one over Y in the X direction and that gives me plus because the Y direction is in the positive positive Y direction so we have K lambda L over Y times 1 over L squared plus Y squared to the 1 half power like this and in the positive Y direction okay now is there some commonality here uh, let's see here we have a Y we have a Y here I can write this as minus 1 I can go ahead and pull out a Y so if I do that, I can write it like this, E is equal to, I'm missing a lambda here, I think. Am I not missing a lambda? Something is yeah, wrong. Yeah, I thought so. Something is wrong. This should be a lambda. Okay, if that's a lambda, then this is a lambda. Like so. so this was K lambda, not KY. And now I can pull out a Y, so I can write this as, k lambda over y times y over l squared plus y squared to the one half power minus one in the x direction plus here we have uh, k lambda l over y but I can bring the l inside I'm going to bring the l inside the parentheses here divided by y times L over L squared plus Y squared to the one half power in the Y direction and finally I can factor out the K lambda Y so we have the electric field is equal to K lambda over Y times this Y over L squared plus Y squared to the one half power let's write that a little bit better there we go minus one in the x direction and then we have plus l over l squared plus y squared to the one half power in the y direction and make that into a round parenthesis like that and i think we got it so this is now the electric field caused by line charge we have the constants k, which is, of course, where k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught. We have lambda divided by y times this quantity in the x direction, this quantity in the y direction. And that's essentially the answer of our electric field in two parts, y part, the y part and the x part. Okay, that is how we do that. Uh, it gets quite complicated as you will see in this kind of uh, in these kind of calculations now what would happen when the point isn't directly vertically above the line what the, what is if it's offset that makes things even more complicated you can see yes this can get quite messy and we'll show you examples of all these different types where you can see how to manipulate and calculate the electric field do all kinds of charge distributions so that is how it's done um, and yeah, stay tuned, we'll show you other examples of this type. I was also wondering what would happen if we take this to the limit. Hmm, maybe that's another video for us. <laughs> All right, let's try that. But that's at least the full answer of our electric field to that outline charge. Did you notice my mistake up there? I noticed it. <laughs> okay. And I'll fix it. Thank you.